This is Anastasia from AnastasiaPopova.com and CrochetForBabies.com. Thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this great pair of toddler socks. This pair is worked in worsted weight yarn, making them quick to crochet and creates nice, thick and warm fabric. Those socks are great for wearing in snow boots or rain boots or just slip like slippers around the house. This pattern is suitable for beginners, as it only uses single crochet and chains. You need to know how to read and count your stitches though, as there are increases and decreases involved. The socks are worked from the toe up. Increases are made for the gusset, and then the heel opening is created. Then the sock is worked up to the ankle. The cuff is then worked sideways around the ankle and seamed up afterwards with yarn tail and a yarn needle. We use back loop single crochet stitches for the cuff which creates stretchy fabric to make it easier for the sock to be put on. Lastly, the heel is worked into the heel opening. I am following my crochet pattern for thick and quick toddler socks. The link is in comments. If you need a sock for a younger baby, take a look at my Ariana baby socks pattern or baby wearing outside socks, as they are made using similar construction and technique. You will need worsted weight yarn. For the blue sock I used Peyton's classic wool worsted. For the purple sock I used Cascade yarn 220 superwash. This sock can go easily in a washer and dryer. This one actually got a little bit felted in the wash, which works great as a sleeper around the house. Uh, Plymouth Galloway yarn worsted is also a great choice for these socks. You will also need G hook for 25 millimeter for this pattern. Let's get started. So I'm going to start with a slip knot and chain eight. Make a slip knot. Wrap the yarn around your finger twice, pick up the first chain, pull it over the second, pick up the first, pull it over the second, pick up the first and take it off. And now I'm going to chain 8. So yarn over the hook and pull it through the loop you have on your hook. Yarn over the hook, pull it through the loop on your hook. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain across to last chain. So starting with the second chain from the hook. First, second. And I'm only picking up the top strand to make a single crochet. Insert the hook on the top strand of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop with two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two again. And I'm making single crochet all the way to the last chain. In the last chain, I'm going to make three single crochet all into that one chain space. So one, two, um, and I like to pick up the last one on this side, otherwise it's going to have a big giant hole there. But they're all done in that last chain, just in different strands of it. Now I'm going to single crochet next five chains working on the opposite side of the foundation chain. So the stitches are created on this side of the chain and the other set will be created on the opposite side. So this will be my next chain. One. Two, three, 
and five. And in the next chain, I will be making two single crochet. One, and my yarn is getting caught, two. So my round one is done, and I should have 16 stitches. I'm going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen stitches. So round one is done. For the round number two, it says single crochet next seven stitches, three single crochet next stitch, and I'm doing this twice. So single crochet next seven stitches. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the next stitch, I'm making three single crochet. One, two, three. And I'm doing this again single crochet next seven stitches. Four, five, six, seven, and then three single crochet in the stitch. At this point, I should have twenty stitches. I'm going to count them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. So round two is done. For the size I'm making, I will need to single crochet in the next eight stitches and then two single crochet in the next one. I'm making the medium size to fit toddler shoe sizes five to six. So I'm making single crochet in the next eight stitches. And that was five, yes, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Two single crochet in the next one. Single crochet in the next nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then two single crochet in the next stitch. And to complete this row, one more single crochet. That should give me 22 stitches. I'm going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I have 22 stitches and three rounds and that completes the toe area of the sock. So if we look at the finished sock, this is where I am right now. For the foot, I will be doing I will be making single crochet in each stitch around until I get to about this area and I will be increasing on each side and working till the heel opening. I'm crocheting the foot of the sock. I'm doing one single crochet in each stitch around. And I'm doing this for, for the size that I'm following and we're doing 11 rows or until the piece measures 
two inches and three quarters. So I'm about done with this. And then the marker is marked at the beginning of my round. So I have two and three quarters here. And I'm measuring under the top strand. So I'm actually measuring the actual stitches and not this portion of the stitch because that's where the other stitches will go. So this will be covered up anyway. Okay, so now the pattern tells me to mark side stitches. Lay the sock flat. Place stitch markers on both sides of the sock to separate 10 stitches between markers for the bottom of the foot. Since my beginning of the round is kind of on the top here, I will use this side of the sock as the bottom of the sock as the bottom. And I need to separate 10 stitches. Okay, so let's see. If I put a stitch marker here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I straighten the toe area of the sock. I have my side markers and as you can see I'm using different colored markers for the sides of the sock and beginning of the round. It's a little bit overflaps but not so much. Okay in the next round I'm doing some increases to shape the gusset of the sock. So I'm single crocheting in each stitch to the marked stitch and putting two single crochet where the marker is. Okay, so I'm in the marked stitch now. I'm putting two single crochet in here. So one, two. And I need to move the stitch marker into the first of the two stitches. Okay, and I'm gonna continue single crochet until the next marker. Okay, I got to the marked stitch. I'm putting two single crochet in here. And I'm moving the stitch marker into the first of the two stitches made. And I'm going to finish this round now. And I'm going to single crochet until I get to the end of the row. For the next two rounds, I'm just going to be single crocheting in each stitch round. I don't move my stitch markers every round. Um, I usually do it every four or five rounds. I can always extrapolate up where that stitch is. It just saves a little bit of time. But if you like to move them every round, by all means, go for it. So that was round, only half a round. I'm just gonna continue single crochet in each stitch until I get all the way around. Okay, that was round one. And now one more round. After this round, I will be creating the heel opening.
Okay. I'm almost at the end, so I'm reading the instructions for the next round. Okay, single crochet in each stitch, two marked stitch. Okay, so where is my marked stitch? Okay, just make sure it's actually on the side, yep. Okay, so single crochet in each stitch, two marked stitch, then chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now skip next 11 single crochet. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Make sure that the loop on the hook is not too loose, that you are tightening it up a little bit. And now I'm going to single crochet into the remainder of the round. But before I do that, I like to make sure that my heel opening is actually in the middle of the foot and nothing is twisted. So I will lay the sock flat, straightening in the seams of the toe. Okay, so I think it looks like, yep. Doesn't look like it's all right in the middle. Very good. So I will finish single crocheting in the remaining stitches and that will give me the heel opening and after this I will be working on the ankle. So now I'm ready to do the ankle of the sock. I don't need the side stitch markers anymore so I will be removing them. Um, I moved my beginning of the round marker a little bit higher um, and now I will be making single crochet in each stitch around for four rounds. And then this row, round, so single crochet in each stitch, including the chains. And when I'm working in the chain, into the chain stitches, I'm just picking up the top strand of the chain. Just make sure you don't twist the chain. Okay, so the top strand of the chain and then I'm working into the actual single crochet stitches, so I'm picking up the two strands. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. This is the foot of the sock. And this is where the heel is going to go. So this is the heel, that's the heel opening. And from here, we're building up the ankle. So this is the way it's here. So I will be doing it here. Um, by picking up just the top strand of the chain, you're leaving the bottom of the loops open. So that's where the heel is going to go. It's going to make it a little easy to pick up those stitches. So for the next three rounds, I'm just going to be single crocheting up. Now that I have four rounds of ankle, completed, I am ready to start on the ribbing. First, I gotta make sure that I have a slip stitch. Okay, now chain nine. Single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain across. So first, second, Okay. 
Okay, so the ribbing is worked sideways. Meaning, so here's the sock, here's the ribbing. We're gonna be doing it this way. We're gonna be turning every row at the end and then attaching it to the sock, to the angle of the sock. So I have one more chain left. Now, to attach the ribbing to the sock, I'm going to be slip stitching into the next two stitches. One, two. Make sure your slip stitches are not too tight, otherwise this will be very tight and it won't stretch. Now I need to turn. So you can either turn this way or this way. I prefer to go this way, but you can choose either way, you just have to be consistent. Okay, so for the row two, we're gonna be working in the back loops only, single crochet in each chain across, in each single crochet across. We're not counting slip stitches. So I'm working into the back loop only. So this is my front loop, this is the back loop. And I'm single crocheting in each stitch across. There should be eight single crochet. Okay, when I get to the end, I'm going to chain one, turn, and single crochet through the back loop back including the very first stitch. So I'm, I'm skipping the chain and I'm going into the very first single crochet here. Again, there should be eight single crochet. When I get to the end, I'm going to slip stitch in the next two stitches. So this is where the last slip stitch was. So I'm going into here. Let me do this again. So I'm going in here and then to the next stitch. Turn, single crochet in each stitch back through the back loop only. So I'm repeating rows two and three here. Going through the back loop, when I get here I chain, turn, when I get to this side I slip stitch, turn, and I keep going back and forth until I go all the way around the angle. So I have finished crocheting the ribbing, I went all the way around the angle, and I'm ready to fasten off now. I'm going to chain one, cut the yarn, leaving about 10 inches. Extend the loop until the end comes out. And now that I have the yarn here, I'm just going to use a yarn needle and seam up the ribbing opening. And I'm just using regular whip stitch. You can either do it with the right side facing or the wrong side facing. Um, you could use a mattress stitch if you prefer. I'm just gonna use a whip stitch here. So I'm picking up one strand on the side where the chain is and two strands on my last row where the single crochet are. So one strand here and two strands here. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna make a knot. White one just to make sure the yarn, you know, uh, the yarn tail doesn't go anywhere. So I created a little loop here. And then I'm gonna basically insert the needle back into that loop. Pull it tight. And then weave in the ends. The end. So I'm inserting the needle through the stitches. You can see the needle on either side. And I choose to weave it in this way because the stretch of the ribbon is this way. And if the yarn tail goes the same way as the stretch, it has more chances of coming out. This way, I'm just sure it will stay in more securely. And I will trim it now. Okay, so what's left here is to create the heel. So now I'm ready to create a heel for the sock into this heel opening. Before actual crocheting, there are some setups we gotta do. Um, we need to place stitch markers of both corners of this uh, heel opening. So let me see if I can show it to you up close. So here are the single crochet, here are the chains. This is the single crochet where I would like the marker to go. So it's the single crochet that was made after the chains were created. And I'd like to insert the stitch marker through the side strand of this single crochet right here. On the other side, I'm also looking for the same for similar single crochet. So it's the single crochet that's part of the heel opening round. And I'm inserting it under two strands of that single crochet. Okay, so now I'm going to join the yarn into the heel opening. I like to do it on the single crochet side. So insert the hook in any stitch on the two strands. Grab the yarn, pull up a loop. And then from here I will be just single crocheting. And I'm single crocheting over the yarn end as well, so I don't have to weave it in afterwards. And notice that I did not chain. Okay, so now that I got to the stitch marker. Okay, so this is where I have it. Last single crochet. Now I'm going to put a stitch where the stitch marker is. It's going to take some wiggling. Not the easy thing to do. Uh, it helps sometimes to pull the stitch marker to kind of like stretch out this, the opening where you would like the hook to go. Do not create the stitch into a space that's already kind of stretched out. That's just going to make it worse. You kind of want to get your hook into a tighter stitch. Okay. Now I'm going to be crocheting into the foundation, into the chain of the heel opening. And I'm picking up just one strand here. I guess that chain was all loose. So I'm single crocheting in every single chain until I get to the next marker. Okay. Now again, I'm putting a stitch into the marked stitch. Okay. Now that was the whole space between the stitches. Okay, so have a space here. 
Okay. So this might look like a space where the stitch was supposed to go, but no. There is a stitch already here, so I'm going into the next one right here. So I'm crocheting all the way till the end. So this is where I joined yarn, here, so I have one more stitch to go. And then for the round two, I will pick up this space, those strands right there. So for round two, single crochet in each stitch to next marker and then single crochet two together. So I got to the marker. Now I'm going to be doing single crochet two together. So I'm going to insert the hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, insert the hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through all three strands on my hook. That was a single crochet decrease, a single crochet two together. And I'm going to single crochet in each stitch until I get to the next marker. For the next three rounds of the heel, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to single crochet until I get to the marker and then decrease, single crochet till the next marker and decrease. So what I'm doing is I'm creating those lines here for the heel. I'm decreasing the sides of it, but it will create a line on each side. Okay, so I'd like to show you another way of doing single crochet two together and that um, is a little more closed together. Sometimes the stitch itself tends to create like a hole and there's more of an invisible way of doing it. So I'm about ready to do another one. So instead of inserting the hook right here on the two strands, you kind of go a little bit deeper. Do you see a little V over here? So that's where you would insert the hook for the first loop. And then for the second one, you would go under the two strands. And then you would go under two, under all three strands. So that also helps you to create the line. And it keeps your stitches from stretching out way too much. On the next round, um, which is the last round of the heel, uh, single crochet two together, single crochet in the next stitch. So I will just be doing decreases spaced out by regular single crochet. If I'm doing the decrease into regular single crochet, I'm just picking up through the top strand like I did before. But if I'm working into the single crochet two together, I'm going in a little bit deeper to avoid the extra hole. Two together and regular single crochet. I'm all the way around. Okay, so in the next stitch, I'm going to slip stitch and then fasten off, leaving about 10 inches of yarn. Okay, where's my yarn needle? Okay, for the heel opening, I like to use a mattress stitch. I feel like that gives me the cleaner way of creating this heel opening. Actually, let me show you what I have now. So here is a sock. Beautiful. And we have a bit of a hole here. That's how the heels work. So now we're going to close it up. 
So I like to lay the sock flat, stretch where the toes are, flatten all the lines, align my heel decreases, make sure everything is lined up and symmetrical. Okay, I'm gonna thread the yarn. And do a match stitch right here with the right side facing. It gives you the best result that way. So I'm aligning the stitches of the heel opening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the needle in and out of the last single crochet of the last row. Then I'm inserting the needle on the other side in and out and then pulling it close but not too tight too tight it will kind of kill your stitches i'm not going to make it look pretty so you want to just space it out a little bit so this is where my last strand was i'm inserting the needle where that yarn came from so back into this space and going into the next one the next space over. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to leave this loop here so I can show you where the needle goes. And then I'm going to just tighten both of them. You can actually see that when they're tightening, kind of making it look like a V. with the rest of the stitches. There's not many left. There might be a little one. Okay. I think this is it. So I'm just going to make a knot. and weave in the yarn tail. Okay, trim the end, remove the stitch markers, and celebrate the first sock completed. Now I'm gonna repeat this for another one so I can have a pair of socks. Okay, this is it. I think this is really cute and comfy for the little one to wear. Elastic is very, very stretchy, so it's easy to put on. It's nice and warm, and it was pretty quick to do. Thank you for joining me.